most of you guys are here and again i'm quite delighted to see you all of all, all of you here and uh, how many of you are enjoying the cfa level 2 journey how many of you are like really enjoying it right now few weeks are remaining for the exam anyone okay wonderful uh, dinesh okay excellent now how many of you have felt that cfa level 2 is actually a big leap as far as as, as compared to level 1 is concerned anyone okay it's a massive leap now why do you think that's the case why do you think most of the students they feel maybe apprehensive or maybe they actually it, it, it it's actually a difficult exam there's no doubt about it there's no doubt there's no second thought about it it is an, it's a very difficult exam but uh, as far as uh, if you start comparing it with level 1 again it's a big leap but why do you think that's the case is it the content that is content that is extremely difficult or maybe it's more calculative a uh, lot of cons involved or maybe it's more intuitive uh, now you have cases previously you only had like one question that you need to answer you know yeah you need to have technique but apart from that uh, you need to also understand that you need to have a very disciplined approach as far as level 2 is concerned if you don't have discipline maybe you can clear level 1 maybe you don't do enough practice but still you will you will be able to clear level 1 i don't know most of you have obviously cleared level 1 but again in level 2 there's no there's no uh, easy way out you have to put in your hours you have to do a lot of questions you need to do actually cases and let's start with our uh, this 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 intro session now how do you clear level 2 it's such a difficult task so how do you think yeah the scope is extremely wide Ext it, the scope plus even the material is not that easy to understand you need to spend time you need to like understand the concept if you don't know the concept then again uh, everything is interlinked now you're doing a case over here so each questions uh, they are intertwined they are um, part of this holistic view now previously in level 1 i think the major difference is that you didn't have a holistic view so each question was independent now we have a case and again everything is intertwined as i've just said and you need to know the flow you need to know the flow of the case now having said this how many of you have actually uh, okay excellent so how many of you have actually seen a pattern to these cases now you can only be able to like find the, the, that pattern if you have done ample amount of practice how many of you have seen that there is a certain way the, the cases are developed or there is a certain order to it yeah excellent there is a certain order to it so you need to understand that these cases they like they have a certain pattern and if you are able to break that pattern before the exam then there's a very high chance that you'll be able to clear your exam now one thing that i always feel is that most of us when we are reading a case we at times try to bring our uh, uh, like uh, misconception and maybe our way of thinking into the case so please don't do that read the case very carefully and again the problem over here in level 2 is the time frame now you have a case you have i believe uh, if it is a six question case you have 18 minutes so over here you don't have time to read the case again and again you can't just do that so whenever you're reading a case so you need to read the case extremely carefully now most of the students they actually ask me that is it better to read the case before or read the questions before now i don't know how many of you follow which strategy anyone can can uh, like what do you guys do do you guys read the case first or do you guys read the question first like this is a major question that most of the students they ask me okay so you guys read the case or you write uh, read okay you guys read the question first okay now look there is a there's a pattern to it again as far as i am concerned what i used to do initially i used to read the case very carefully and then i used to read the question i think this is the best strategy because at time 
some of the information they have given later on. At times, some of the information is given later on. So if you just read the question and you just try to find out the, maybe the first question is in the first two paragraphs, maybe you sometime you miss out an information. Now, if you have done enough practice, maybe you have done the CFA website uh, cases maybe two or three times, then you feel confident and unless or until you're not confident about these cases, don't, for, don't go, uh, don't read the question and then read the case. First read the case and then read the question. If you are extremely confident, if you have understood the pattern, if you have broken this, 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 this whole thought process that how the case is developed, then you, you follow this strategy that you read the question and then you go for the case. Until then, you, if you're not confident, don't do that. Because when you have done ample amount of practice, you exactly know what information you need. And at times in the case, as, as I've just said, that they have given some information later on in the case. So you will exactly know that, okay, so this information is absent. And then you can find that uh, information in the case. Other than that, don't do the other way around. Don't do the question first and then the case. The best way is that you read the case and then you move forward. Now, up till now, how many of you have actually uh, understood the pattern? Like, uh, I hope everyone has started to do their CFA website question. Is there anyone who has seen a pattern that there are certain concepts that they are, they will going to ask you those, those concepts, no matter what happened. So no matter what happened, they will be asking you certain questions. For example, if, uh, if you are doing uh, equity, they are bound to ask you on uh, free cash flow. Maybe there's a, some calculation that you need to find out uh, free cash flow, FCF, FCFP, discount rates, and so on. Residual income, how do you calculate residual income, clean surplus violation, and so on. And in derivatives also, there's a certain way that, uh, and most of the students, they find derivative quite, uh, uh, quite, like, quite difficult. How many of you feel derivative is quite difficult? Yes, so here. Anyone? Yes, so here you wanted to ask a question. And Kemi also, you can ask questions. Yeah, you can you can unmute your mic and ask. No, I was just referring to derivatives, no questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, derivative is quite overwhelming in level two as compared to level one. Now again, there's a certain pattern to it. Now, if I ask you, uh, like in black shoal model, how do you come up with your call option? Like if I ask you this question, like in black shoal, what is your call option? How do you come up with your uh, call option? Anyone? Now use the formula, that's not the right answer. Long the stock, short the bond. Long the stock, short the bond. This is how the formula is made. How the put option is made. Long the bond, short the asset. Long the bond, short the asset. So these are the certain techniques you need to know. And again, I don't know when I was giving CFA level two, honestly speaking, I didn't memorize anything. There's, there's no need to memorize anything. There's no need to memorize big formulas. You need to know how those formulas or how those concepts have been developed. So anyhow, so let's move forward. Um, and again, please be very careful, most likely, least likely, very, they're very tricky. Please read the question carefully, what they're asking you, even though you know the concept, but still you might get the answer wrong. Try to manage your time carefully. Now I've seen students and I've uh, spoken with students who found that maybe they left one case or two case. Now, the problem is that your pattern of uh, CF exam has changed. Now you might be getting, you will be getting more than 10 cases. So maybe in each case, uh, one case is for four questions, the other case is for six questions. So again, the number of uh, uh, concepts that they, they would be testing, it has increased actually. So no, end of chapter is not enough to appear for your exam. Honest answer. End of chapter question is not enough to appear for your, answer, uh, for your exam. 
end of chapter questions and CFA website question, at least you need to do them. At least end of chapter questions and your CFA website questions, you have to do them. I don't know, um, there are around like thousand questions in your CFA website. Um, like I, I believe there are more than like two or two hundred, uh, like approximately two hundred cases. Eighteen hundred, yeah. So most probably like two to three hundred cases you guys have, unless or until you haven't done those cases. There's no point going and giving your exam. Most probably you're going to fail. Honest answer. And once you have done CFA website questions and your end of chapter questions, extremely important. Then you move forward for maybe any other prep provider, QBank and so on. But first do the CFA website question because they are the one who are making your exam, not anyone else. Uh, so be wary about that. And also give, yeah, so uh, look, mock exam, if you're giving them, and you need to give mock exam, you need to give mock exam. You first, you do your CFA mock, CFA website questions. Maybe you, you go buy some prep provider mock. You need to give mock exam. It will help you. It will going to help you. And again, if you are giving your mock exam, the first mock, maybe even if you score between 60 to 70, it's a good sign. Even if you score between 60 to 70, it's, it's not that bad. Okay, so because it's your first time. Okay, now do your CFA website questions. I cannot stress enough and end of chapter questions. They, this is the pattern on which your exam would actually be based upon. And you need to understand some topics have more weights. And I'll be talking about this and this is extremely important. Now, I'll be talking about this in a moment's time. Now, please make notes of your weakness. And I always say that do as many mistakes as possible, but do it before your exam. Do as many mistakes as possible. When you do a mistake, that's the point where you learn. And there's no easy way out. You have to put in your hours. How many hours uh, you believe that you should be putting in? Before your exam, maybe two or three weeks before your exam. And how many hours that you put in level one? Let's, let's compare it with level one. You only have 24 hours. You can't go beyond 24 hours. But how many hours you are putting in before level one? Maybe you are giving like maybe four to eight hours. Let's assume. So level one is, no, is not easy as well. Level one is also quite difficult. But again, level two, you need to do those cases. You need to actually solve the answers. Please make a notebook, have a notebook with you. I still remember when I was giving uh, the uh, CFA level two exam, like almost 10 years ago. So uh, when I was preparing for, when I was doing practice, so I always used to have a notebook with me. And whenever I used to make a mistake, I always used to write that mistake on my notebook. I don't know how many of you are doing that. It was extremely helpful because maybe uh, I still remember 10 days before the exam, I went through that notebook and it was of real help to me. Please start making notes. Are you guys making them? Okay, but yeah, uh, with work, it's, it's quite difficult. Okay, good, excellent. Please make notes of your weaknesses. Okay, now uh, let's do this first. Now, the game plan is that we'll first do quants, then financial statement analysis. Now I'm putting stars over here. If you financial statement analysis, portfolio management, equity, and fixed income, please make it a point that you have to score more than 70% in these topics. You have to score them. There is no easy way out. You have to score more than 70% in these topics. Even if you score, even if you have good score, but in any one of them, you get below 50. The probability of you clearing the exam is, it becomes quite difficult. So the game plan is that we'll be doing quants first and I will be doing cases with you guys. We'll be doing at least six to seven cases in a class, at least in, for each topic, 
and we'll try to cover all the major concepts that you need to know before you enter the exam. So I'll be taking cases from maybe end of chapter questions and your uh, CFA website questions. And you can also give me cases from your CFA website questions if you have any questions. Please do that. I would be, I would welcome that. If you have any questions or if you have any case you want me to discuss in the class, send me beforehand and I'll be, and I will be doing that case with you guys. But again, please make it a point that these four topics, fixed income, equity, portfolio management, and financial statement analysis, four topics you cannot get below 70. You have to get these topics above 70%. And how many of you are comfortable with these topics, these four topics? How many of you are at this point comfortable? Yes. Ethics is also important, but ethics is the same thing that you have done in level one. Okay, so if you are not confident in these four topics, and I'm telling you portfolio management is difficult. Portfolio management is not that easy. Out of these four, I believe equity is the easiest one. Out of these four, I believe equity is the easiest one. Fixed income, again, a nightmare. But there's a certain pattern to it. So as I've said that we will be having, we will be doing cases from, uh, uh, from each topic. Okay, Maros, thank you, thank you. Okay, there's one thing you need to know, there will be no class on third. There will be no class on third, so Thursday we won't be having classes. This is one thing that you need to know. We'll be starting on Monday, 31st October, then Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday there's no class. Now, how many of you are actually feeling petrified? Like how many of you are actually feeling that anxiety? Yes, I would be sharing the crash course slides with you guys. I would be sharing them. I would be sharing them. Okay. How many of you are actually uh, feeling that 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 pain, that anxiety that maybe you haven't done enough? Maybe there's much more to what I need to know. Now, look, that's natural. That is a natural thing. You would be feeling that anxiety. You would be feeling that I haven't prepared enough. You would be feeling that, oh my God, how can I remember all of this? How can I remember these formulas? This is something natural. I went through. I went through the same anxiety, same dilemma. But this is the point or this is a time, I believe uh, maybe four weeks are uh, remaining before your exam. This is the point where you have to uh, like uh, control your anxiety. You have to uh, consol start consolidating things. Still, it is not late. It is not late. You can still, obviously, if you work hard, you will be able to clear the exam. It's not rocket science in the end of the day. Start small. Start small. Okay? Start doing cases. Start doing practice. There's no point of you to start reading the curriculum again. Please start to do questions. Now, there's no time left to read the curriculum and start to relearn the concepts. No. Just start doing cases. Forget about everything. When you make a mistake, go refer to your curriculum. When you make a mistake, go refer to your curriculum. Okay, guys? Now, how to do revision? Very good question. I still remember when I was giving my exam, I used to make a note. I used to write like VIP, very important point. And at times when I used to revisit that note, I used to find it totally new, even though I had uh, gone over that note. That is the point I'm saying that start writing things down. How many of you have started writing things now? Please write things down. Make a note. Equity. Okay, equity. This is what I know. This is what I, I when I was doing questions, this, these are the mistakes that I was doing. This is the time that you need to know that what are your weak, weak areas and start focusing on your weak areas. Now, practice is the key. And in the class, I will be doing extremely important, extremely important concepts that are highly testable for your exam. Like as far as your exam is concerned, they are highly testable. Because through time, I've seen that there's a pattern through which they ask question. So, in the class, in my crash course class, we would be doing those important concepts that you need to know before you enter the exam. Now, I will also be telling you guys what are the intuitive ways 
to do maybe complicated questions as for example, black shows. Now, if I ask you, like uh, if I'm talking about derivatives, at what point uh, gamma is the highest? How many of you even know what gamma is? When is gamma the highest? When the option is what? Okay, Sarah said out of the money. No, it's at the money. And there's a second thing also. Most of the students, they, they forget the second thing. Not in the money, it's at the money. It's at the money. Everyone knows this. Everyone knows, everyone in this world knows this that it is at the money. But there's a second thing also. And the examiner will going to test you on that second thing. When is gamma highest? When the option is at the money and near expiration. Near expiration. These are the tricks that you need to know as far as your exam is concerned. I don't know how many of you actually knew this question. So we would be doing concepts important for your exam, intuitive way, how to think and answer these questions. And for example, tricks like these. Now, these classes, obviously we'll be doing concepts, but the most important aspect regarding these classes is that we will be building a rhythm. We will be building this, this momentum few weeks, just few weeks before your exam. Once that momentum is built, when you start solving six to seven, eight, even at times you might be doing 10 cases in a class. So when that momentum is, is built, that momentum is built, then your confidence also builds up. And I'm telling you this one, one important fact that when you have ample amount of confidence and confidence comes from, comes from practice, you need to solve at least 10 cases a day to have that confidence, at least. Once you have that concept, uh, confidence, at times I've seen that subconsciously, even if you don't know the answer, if you don't, even if you don't know the answer, subconsciously, you tend to tilt towards the right answer. Your intuition is bent towards the right answer. So this is one thing that even if you don't know the answer, but again, because of practice, you have this intuition that guides you towards the right answer, but you cannot get this without doing extreme amount of practice. Anyhow, now these classes would be for two weeks, but just one day, Thursday, there will be no class. That's your third. The class would be for two to three hours. The class would be for between two to three hours. Maybe at times, if a topic is long, we might go beyond three hours as well. But my, I believe between two to three hours, we'll be able to complete most of the, actually, uh, like quite, quite a lot of cases. The classes will be starting on 31st October, that is your Monday, and the class will be at uh, 16.30 GMT or 8.30 Dubai time. How many of you are comfortable with this time? 8.30 Dubai time, and just uh, you can calculate what will be the time in your area. How many of you would be comfort comfortable in this time? And if you, if you want some other time, maybe we can have a consensus. Okay, so you're in the USA. Okay. So we can come up with a consensus time if you can, um, uh, if you can write down, uh, okay, uh, so most of you are in the U US side. Okay, so maybe you can write to IFT. Maybe you can write to IFT what, what time suits you. So it will uh, help out. But officially right now, the time is at 8.30. Uh, what time will going to suit you guys? How about 6.30? 6.30 p.m. Dubai time. Six thirty p.m. Dubai time. If it works for most of the students, I think it would be. Okay, anyhow, so you guys uh, can, you, you will be getting recorded lectures also. So you will be getting recorded lectures. So, uh, Again, if, even if you miss a class, then you can see the recorded lectures. And obviously, we'll be making a WhatsApp group also. And I want the WhatsApp group to be active. I want you guys to share questions. I want you guys to participate in the group because you learn when you, uh, like when you start to interact.
look in in my detail videos obviously those are the detailed videos so these these are like in the class like classroom i'll be going over everything but again in your exam you won't be doing like you won't go over the whole uh, thought process you just need to know quick tips you just need to know quick answers so that's that is what we'll be focusing on uh, these crash courses this crash course yeah the recording will be posted on the same day recording will be posted on the same day there actually the next day you will be getting the recordings within like 12 hours you will be getting the recordings within 12 hours and i i think if you are able to summarize each topic in 2 to 3 hours is not a bad deal if you are able to grasp if you are able to find out core concept in like 2 to 3 hours i think it's a good enough um, like it's a good way to learn so here i didn't uh, get your question so if you can ask the question right now we can like i can answer it okay so let's do look in in the in my detail videos i do a lot of things i do a lot of things but again in the crash course i will be very much focused on the core concepts and and and, and obviously i'll be like at times i don't tell these tricks in uh, in my regular classes because over there it, it, it doesn't make sense because over there i have to tell the the whole background what is all about what's the concept is all about but in in these crash courses obviously i will be telling you guys certain tricks as well okay yeah uh, if you are new to ift material so ift material it 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 covers the curriculum it 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 has a flow towards the like it we follow the curriculum but these classes are a bit different look there is no pass guarantee in this world there is no pass guarantee what i can promise to you is that i would be working really hard with you guys i would be trying to do whatever is possible so that you guys are equipped enough to clear the exam there is no guarantee of anything but we will be doing cases we will be doing concepts and if you are able to learn these concepts then your probability of clearing the exam actually goes up let's do a question and this is what the class would going to look like now this is a case from your um, from your cfl level 2 let's try to solve this case together and let's see what where you guys stand okay let's see what is your preparedness this is from equity the easiest out of them all now we have a uh, this case valuation strategies case scenario now valuation strategies is a us based manager of equity funds driven by a strict valuation methodology internal and analysts determine intrinsic value target price for each stock in their respective industry groups using the valuation method assigned by the company's director of research sara now obviously in your exam they will going to give you the whole case i have made this thing easier for you guys so i have only selected that information that is pertinent to that question that will be that will be doing now philo judges the integrity and quality of the valuation work and trains the recently hired analyst she meets with three such analyst piers tinker francis evers and jonathan chance to discuss residual income valuation model the analyst makes the following statement now how many of you actually know what residual income model is so residual income model starts from where starts from net income and subtracts what from it what does it subtracts anyone equity charge it doesn't subtract vac equity charge net income minus equity charge okay 
now residual income valuation lacks a focus of economic profitability now the other name for residual income model is economic profit because we are indeed subtracting what we are indeed subtracting your opportunity cost equity opportunity cost so lacks a focus that is the focus of residual income model because we are indeed subtracting what equity charge so if you remember in level, level 1 economic profit is what net income minus opportunity cost or your cost of equity now net income has already deducted what cost of debt already deducted but now we also need to subtract cost of equity so this is wrong in a high growth company residual income model is more sensitive to terminal value now please remember dividend discount model and your uh, free cash flow models they are more what they are more sensitive towards your terminal value because the the major chunk of intrinsic value the major chunk of intrinsic value is coming from where terminal value for example dividend discount model d1 d2 d3 d4 and then we have a big chunk that is your terminal value so free cash flow model and dividend discount model all of them both of them they are more the intrinsic value the majority of the intrinsic value is made up of the terminal value but in case of your residual income model where is the biggest chunk of intrinsic value coming from where is the biggest chunk excellent that is coming from your book value because it is uh, your intrinsic value is equal to book value plus sum of all the residual income present value of all the sum of residual income so in a high growth company residual income model is more sensitive towards to the terminal value no the residual income model may be most appropriate when near term focus forecasted cash flows are negative so if your cash flows are negative then which model then we'll be using then we'll be using your residual income model so chance is correct so chance is correct everyone now over here they're talking about single stage residual income model what is your single stage residual income model where we are assuming that we have a constant growth so can anyone uh, write down the formula for single stage residual income model and do you guys know from where that equation is coming from do you guys know from where that equation is coming from because that is also important so p not is equal to what and i'll be telling you the reason why it is important to know okay so p no 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 p not is equal to what b not plus b not into return on equity minus cost of equity whole over r minus g now if you look closely this numerator is what b not into return on equity minus cost of equity this this is also what if i multiply b not by cost of return on equity what do i get i get earnings b not multiplied by r is what minus cost of equity so this automatically this numerator is what that is your residual income now if i sub start substituting these things over here so we have data over here so b not is 49 plus 49 return on equity easily now you just plug in chuck 0.12 minus cost of equity is how much 0.105 whole upon 0.105 minus your growth is how much 0.055 what do you get anyone what do you guys get yes anyone you will be getting 63.7 excellent option c is the right answer now before we jump on to this you also need to know from where this is coming from so it all starts from where it all starts from your gordon growth model p not is equal to d not 1 plus g whole upon r minus g it all starts from here now if i find out the justified price uh, forward price to earning ratio i divide everything by e1 what does it become this becomes d1 whole over e1 whole over r minus g this becomes what 1 minus retention ratio upon r minus g this is your p not whole over e1 this e1 can be written like what return on equity multiplied by b not so p not is equal to return on equity multiplied by b not is equal to 1 minus retention ratio whole upon r minus g 
Now, if I send this return on equity over here, this will become P naught whole over B naught equals to return on equity into one minus retention ratio whole upon R minus G. Now, return on equity multiplied by one is return on equity minus return on equity minus retention ratio is what? Return on equity multiplied by retention ratio is what? Everyone. Return on equity multiplied by retention ratio is what? It is your growth, G, whole upon R minus G. Now, this is your justified price to book ratio. Justified price to book ratio. From justified forward price to earning ratio, we came, we come up with justified price to book ratio. If I subtract both sides by negative one, so P naught minus B naught whole over B naught is equal to return on equity minus G minus R plus G whole upon R minus G. G and G cancels out. And we are left with what we send B naught over here. So this will become P naught minus B naught is equal to B naught return on equity minus your R and this will come over here P naught is equal to B naught plus B naught return on equity minus R whole upon R minus G. Now this is how you came up with this equation. Now why am I telling you this? The reason I'm telling you this is that if you're using dividend discount model and if you're using residual income model, will the answer differ? Will you be getting the same intrinsic value or, or you will be getting a different intrinsic value? The, the, this is the reason, like if the question comes in your exam that will, they, will the answer differ? What would you say then? What would you say? The answer should be what? The answer should be same. But only when, only when the answer would be same. This is the trick question. This is the thought process you need to know. When would the answer be the same? This is what the examiner will test you upon. If no, 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 Sarah, return is less than G, no, that's not the point. The point is when residual income model and your dividend discount model will be going to give you the same intrinsic value. That's the trick and this, is, this would be tested in your exam. No, growth rate is the same, no, no, no. When clean surplus is not violated, what would you say in your exam when clean surplus is not violated? What do you mean by clean surplus? All the gains and losses, they don't bypass what? They don't bypass income statement. They have to go towards income statement. They, would, they should not bypass income statement. Clean surplus should not be violated. This is the thought process you need to know as far as your exam is concerned. Anyhow, let's move forward. Philo informs Evers that the current market price is 91. She asked her to use the data in Exhibit 1 and the single stage Gordon growth model to determine has implied sustainable growth rate. So we need to find out the growth rate. So P0 is equal to D1 whole over R minus G. So what will be this G equal to? D1 whole over P0. Anyone? This growth will be equal to what? R minus or what? Plus R, negative R, what? R minus G is equal to D1 whole over P naught. G would be equal to what? D1 whole over P naught minus R. What is your price? 93, 91. What was your dividend? In the previous question, dividend was 3. So 3 whole over 91 minus what? What was your discount rate? 0 0.105. Am I doing it correctly? Am I doing it correctly? 0 0.105. Am I doing it correctly? Yes or no, guys? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? What is it? <coughs> Have I written this right? Have I written this correctly? Have I written this correctly? You need to be quick. This should be R minus D1 whole over P naught. This should be R not the other way around. You need to, and I will be doing this in, your, in, in the class. I would be doing mistakes. You need to be attentive in the class. I would be doing mistakes. You need to keep on keep keep track of what I'm doing. Anyhow, 0 0.105 minus 3 over 91 gives you what? 
what is your cost? Uh, what's your growth rate? Anyone? It should boil down to what? 7.2%. Now, how many of you remember Pharma French model? Pharma French model takes into account which factors? Market factor, size factor, value factor, liquidity factor. Am I right? Pharma French takes into account which factors? Market size, value, liquidity. Everyone on the same page? Yes, it doesn't take into account liquidity. It doesn't take into account liquidity factor. What takes liquidity into account? Which model takes liquidity into account? Pastor. Pastor takes liquidity into account. Now it's quite simple. So it's risk free rate plus your sensitivity is multiplied by the premium. So you just multiply, this would be 0.9 multiplied by 4.1 minus 0.44 multiplied by 2 plus 0.7 multiplied by 2.3 plus 0.2 multiplied by 0.2. Am I right? Risk free rate is given to you as 2.1. Am I right? I'm not right. I shouldn't be taking this liquidity factor. Excellent. Now, peg ratio. Price to earning, whole over growth. Higher the ratio better, lower the ratio better. Higher the ratio better, lower the ratio better. Anyone? Lower the ratio the better. Now, there's some problems over here. There are certain problems. These are the three problems you need to know as far as your exam is concerned. This will be tested in your exam. PEG assumes linear relationship between price to earning and growth. But in reality, that might not be linear. PEG does not factor in differences in risk. Over here, we are not taking into account risk altogether. We're just uh, using growth. We are not taking into account risk factors. A problem over here. And again, if we have two companies, A and B, the peg ratio is 10 over here, the peg ratio is 15. Over here, the growth must be higher, but the growth is only for one year. But over here, the growth is smaller, but it's for like seven years. Over here, let's suppose the growth was 10% for only one year. Over here, the growth is 7% for 10 years. But the peg ratio is higher. So it doesn't account for the differences in the duration of growth. So this is the thought process you need to understand. Now, the question is, peg ratio, most accurate statement. The peg ratio accounts for different rates of growth between two companies, but not for different level of risk. Yes, we do take into account growth, but we are not taking into account different level of risk. So is Tinker correct? Tinker seems to be right. What about Evers? Further study of the dividend discount model shows that the relationship between peg and growth rates are linear. No, it cannot. It's, it's not necessary that the growth rate and uh, the relationship is linear. It's not necessary. And because peg ratios can be affected by differences in duration of growth, shorter term forecasts are preferred because such forecasts are more reliable. Obviously, you won't. You are trying to come up with. You're trying to invest in equity stocks. It's it's long term in nature. It's not short term in nature. Anyhow. Uh, you need to understand this point. And again, the second, the thought process is that peg ratio doesn't take into account duration altogether. Can you solve this question for me in, in like five minutes? Can you solve, read this? Can you solve this question for me? When reviewing peg ratio in the industry assigned to him, Chance finds this company appears to be undervalued. He discussed the stock with Philo, who notes that Dov has new yet unproven management. It, if events unfold in accordance with the company's forecast, Philo expects that PE will converge, PE will converge to the industry in two years. Two years, the PE ratio will even converge. Using the data in exhibit three, Chance estimates the forecasted annualized return from the current market price, assuming these expectations hold true. So please come up with the answer. Anyone? 
Dinesh, I, I believe you should be able to solve this. So in two years, the price to earning ratio, this is your forecast industry, it would be converging to this point. Right now, what's your uh, current earning? 2.67. Current PE is 15.1. So what will be the price right now? What will be the price? Price to earning is equal to 15.1. And your earning is 2.69. So what will be the price right now? Anyone? 15.1 into 2.69. 40.61. Now, over here, the price to earning ratio is what? P not whole over E1. This is E1, that is your 17.4. So this E1 is actually the earning over here. EPS is two, uh, current earning is 2.69. What will be the earning after three years? Now, look, people will going to get students will going to get confused over here. They're talking about two years, but this P naught all over E, this is E1 because it is forward PE ratio. So, can you tell me the earning at the end of year three, 2.69 into 1.077 raised to power three? What will be the earning over here at the end of year three? Look, it is not as easy of a question. You need to be very, like, you need to be smart enough to understand what's happening. So this would be 3.36. If this is 3.36, then what will be the price at the end of year two? P naught would be equal to 17.4 multiplied by 3.36. What will be the price at the end of year two? Anyone? 58.4. Fifty-eight point four seven. So you went from forty point six one to fifty-eight point four seven in two years. What's your return? What will be your return? You went from forty point six one to fifty-eight point four in two years. So fifty-eight point four divided by forty point six one. Then you need to do something. Raise to power one upon two minus one. It's two years. So 58.4 divided by 40.61 raised to power 0.5 minus one, you get 20. How many of you would, you would have able to solve this question in a mere 2.5 to three minutes? Honest answer. Now I made this thing easier for you because right now we are just doing this intro session. I'm not like pushing you the way I would be doing in, in the regular crash course classes, but honest answers. Would you would you be like able to do this question if this came in the exam? Do you would you be able to understand this question if it came in the exam that we have to go, we, we have to calculate E E3 actually. Okay. If you look, there's no rocket science. You have, with practice, you will be able to get all of this. Do questions multiple times. When you make a mistake, do that question multiple times. Do those concepts multiple times. Okay, do at least three times. This is my golden number. My golden number is actually a different number, but I, for you guys, it's three. So if you get, if you make a mistake, please make it a point that go over that question or go over that concept at least three times. That's it for today. If you have any questions, you can ask me right now. I would glad to answer your questions and uh, best of luck guys. And I really wish you all the best because I know that the amount of uh, investment that you have done, the amount of sacrifice that you would have done for this exam, the amount of uh, time that you would have like spend on studying rather than with family and with friends, it's quite insane. And again, the amount of pressure it takes while you're working, it's it's unbelievable. So you, you guys are indeed like showing this courage by just giving this exam.
uh, yeah, what, uh, which link? Which link you're talking about? Links, uh, yeah, uh, I would also suggest that please, uh, you can write over here in the chat box uh, and uh, one of our, uh, Mr. Farooq will going to help you out and visit our website. Maybe you can, um, uh, there's a form that you can fill in, 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 in the website. So it will be uploaded on ift.world. So be like, you need to go to the IFT world if you want to like uh, register for these classes. And again, uh, I hope to see you guys on Monday. You guys can come on Monday's class. I hope this intro was uh, helpful. How many of you actually learned few things? Okay, excellent. Excellent guys. Any other questions? Yes, the sessions will be like these. I would be doing cases with you guys and I will also be giving you the background, certain background and certain like understanding. We will be doing only questions. We will be doing only cases. That's it. Obviously, we, while we do a, a question, we will be revising concepts as well. That's the whole purpose. Yes, you guys fill the form up. Officially, it's 8.30, but again, if the majority, if, if you guys feel that 6.30 is good enough time, 6.30 p.m. Dubai time, then we can have it at 6.30 p.m. as well. And you will also be getting IFT revision notes for free uh, for your uh, preparation and formula sheets as well and key facts. So you would be getting these. Uh, okay, 6.30 to 7. Sarah, where are you? In which uh, time slot you are uh, you're uh, you're living? Okay, so it's the right same. So please get in touch with IFT. Tell them the preference time because we are having um, uh, not it's not a difficult thing because you guys are so uh, spread out all over the world. So it makes us it makes the thing quite complicated. Anyhow, take care, guys. Have a good night. Have a good day, wherever you guys are. If you have any questions, please do ask right now, and we'll be ending our session. So you guys have like a couple of minutes. If you have any answer, questions, you can ask right now. Okay, wonderful. Yes, anyone? Okay, Mr. Farooq has, yeah, you can post your doubts on uh, your WhatsApp group. Yes, you can do that. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Take care, have a good night, bye-bye.